Grade 12 Physics, Dynamics, Note 1. Review of Kinematics. So in this note, we're going to review some of the things that we learned from Grade 11. From Grade 11, we did a lot of graph work, particularly displacement time graphs, velocity time graphs, and acceleration time graphs. Here we're just going to look at a case of increasing displacement, increasing velocity, and increasing acceleration. So what do these lines mean? So let's take a look at the slope. The slope of a dt graph is equal to velocity, but how do we know that? Let's check what the units of the slope are. So we have a change in y, which is a change in displacement, over a change in x, which is change in time. So the units would be in meters per second. So that indeed is a velocity. Doing the same thing for a vt graph, the slope should be acceleration. So change in y is a change in velocity, change in x is a change in time. So it's meters per second over second. Meters per second squares is our final unit, which is acceleration. Slope of an AT graph, change of acceleration over time is a jerk. If we check those units, it's meters per second cubed. So we could use these graphs to solve for different aspects of motion, but instead what we do is we create formulas, general formulas, to help us because it could be um, quite tiresome to make graphs all of the time. So we're going to use an arbitrary graph here, a VT graph, where there's an, X, um, an increasing velocity over time. So we'll start um, from some lower velocity and go to some higher velocity, V1 and V2. First we need to check though, what is the area below this line? We should remember that area below is displacement on a VT graph. But how do we know this? We can check the area, we can check the units. So let's say we have a rectangle underneath. So we'll draw an arbitrary rectangle. Area would be length times width. So the length would have units of seconds, the width would have meters per second which will cancel out and we'll have units for meters, which means that the area underneath will be a displacement. So let's make some equations here. We know that the acceleration is equal to the slope. So acceleration would be rise over run. What is the rise? It's a change in V. What is the run? It's a change in time. So that gives us our first formula. A is V2 subtract V1 over time. Number two, we're going to use a modified graph here where we have a constant velocity. So that would give us a straight horizontal line coming from the V. So here again, displacement is equal to the area below. So that means, what is the area? It's just the length times the width. So let's put in the values for that. The length is a velocity, width is a time. So this gives us our second formula, which is only used when we have a constant velocity. Otherwise, we cannot use that formula. Moving on to equation three, we're going to use that um, equation or that graph that we had at the start with an increasing velocity. We have to remember here that displacement is area underneath that line. So what we need to do is we need to break that area down into two parts. There's going to be a rectangle and there's going to be an area of a triangle. So the total displacement would be the area of that rectangle plus the area of the triangle. So the area of the rectangle is a width, length times width, which would be V1 times T. The triangle would be half times base times height, so half times delta V times delta T. But what does this mean? We have to remember from equation one that acceleration is delta V over T, so that means delta V, if we rearrange it, is A times T. We're going to substitute that in for the delta V, so we can have an acceleration term in our equation. We substitute that in, multiply those T's in the last term, and now we have our third equation, where we can find displacement based on our initial velocity. Equation four is very similar except here we're going to find the displacement underneath the curve but we're going to involve that triangle above so we're going to look at the humongous rectangle and then subtract that smaller triangle 
above. So here we're highlighting that big rectangle. So find the area of that, and then we're going to subtract the smaller triangle of the, above the line. So what's left over is the total area underneath the line. Again, rectangle is length times width, triangle is half times base times height. So that's V2 times T minus half, again, times delta V times T. Here we're going to do the same trick as in number 3. We know that delta V is AT. We're going to substitute that in. And this will lead us to our fourth equation where we combine the T's in that last term. So we can find a displacement based on a final velocity. The last equation, equation 5, this is more of an algebraic trick that we're going to play from the first equation. We're going to rearrange it for V2. Um, now to start we're going to square both sides. First side is good, but the second side we have to square a binomial, which means we have to expand that binomial, which will look like this. Now in the final two terms of that binomial, we're going to um, factor out a 2a term. So in the first one it's easy, so 2a times v1t plus we're going to have to add a half term if we're going to put in that last one. Now we recognize whatever's in the brackets, that is equation 3. So we can just substitute a d in for that. And now there you have it, there's our fifth equation. Moving on to vector review. Vectors are pretty important in physics. Remember, a vector contains direction and magnitude data. Let's say we just have four arbitrary vectors, A, B, C, and D. So we'll draw them here. And what we're going to do, we're just going to put different situations down. We're adding or subtracting them. The first one, we'll just do A plus B. So pretend we pick up A and lay it down, we pick up B and lay it down there, we line them tip to tail, and we draw in the resultant vector, the tail of the first vector to the tip of the last one. So there, there it is in red, A plus B. Second one, A minus B, we can actually re rewrite that as A plus negative B. So that way we turn it into an addition. So there's our A, and now we're going to put negative B. So you can see that B there is pointing in the opposite direction as the B listed at the top. Now we can add them. A plus negative B, there's the result. Next one here, 2D minus B. Again, we'll rewrite that as 2D plus negative B. So we need two Ds. So there's both of our Ds. And now we need the negative B again. So that's just B, but in the opposite direction. Add them together. And there it is, 2D minus B. Last one here is going to be C plus D. So we're just going to pick up C and put it down. Pick up D and put it down. And we get our resultant C plus D. Another important concept in this unit would be vector components. We should review that. So let's just say we have an arbitrary here that's vector that's six units long on a 30 degree angle. Let's figure out what the x and y components are of this vector. So we'll use y in blue and the x component will be in green. So here if we look for this x component, x is the adjacent side to that angle so we can use cos. So x is going to be 6 cos 30 which ends up being 5.2 units. The y component, if we use it in reference to that angle, is going to be the opposite side of the 30 degrees. So we need to use sine. y equals 6 sine 30, which is 3 units. A second example here, we're going to use a vector just pointing east, that's 4 units. But we're going to add a ramp around it. And what we want to do here is we want to find the components of this vector that are parallel and perpendicular to the ramp. So what that's going to look like, we'll draw it in. Here's the one that's parallel, that's the component parallel to the ramp, and then the component perpendicular to the ramp. So if we take a look 
we want to find the components. All we really need to do is we need to turn the page. And now it looks like a regular thing if we use that angle of a 20 degrees. We can find each of the components. The parallel component would just be the adjacent part to that angle. So it's going to be 4 cos 20, so 3.8 units. And then the perpendicular will be the opposite side to that angle, which is going to be 4 sine 20, which is going to be 1.4 units. Final aspect here, we're going to look at motion graph, something we saw in grade 11. So let's just say we have some motion here. Is this object moving to the left or to the right? Well, in fact, we actually we don't know. There's not enough information to tell. If this object is moving to the right, we can say that it's slowing down. If this object is moving to the left, we can say that it's speeding up. It's important to denote um, what kind of information we're dealing with so we know the motion that we're dealing with. Finally, using motion diagrams, we can uh, illustrate different types of motion. The first one, let's say a car is rolling down a hill. So the car starts pretty slow, but as it goes down, it speeds up, so the dots get further apart. And when it gets to the flat section, it's at constant velocity, so the dots are equally spaced. Next here, let's say a spaceship is landing on Mars. The spaceship's going to come in pretty quick, so the dots are further spaced, and then it's going to slow down, which is illustrated by the dots that are closer. Finally, a roller coaster, let's say there's two hills. It gets pulled up the first hill at constant velocity by the chain. And as it goes down, it's going to speed up so we, they get further apart. Up the second hill, they get a little closer and further apart again.